hello. Thanks for joining me. I am uh, Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda, and I've been involved in clinical research for a number of years. I've actually participated in over 20 clinical trials on various aspects of uh, wound healing research. And I've been asked to participate in this course. I'm very honored to do so, uh, to participate in this course and talk to you about a few of the clinical elements related to performing research uh, in wound care. And one of the first subjects that we're going to discuss is wound debridement. It's a very important part of not only the clinical practice of uh, wound management, but also uh, has a strong um, relationship to many of the research protocols that you may find yourself involved in. A few disclosures. I'm a consultant to Arabetta Medical as well as Regenis Medical and a, uh, a member of the Speakers Bureau for Shire and KCI. You need to understand a few things about uh, debridement in research as opposed to debridement in uh, the clinical practice. And we're going to talk uh, largely about debridement as it relates to clinical practice, but you need to have a different sort of uh, specialized focus when we start looking at the debridement uh, as it relates to research. And those differences are is that the debridement that you will be performing when you're involved in a clinical research trial is going to be protocol driven. In other words, the protocol will tell you exactly what type of procedure you're going to be doing. It will be a very standardized procedure. What type of debridement should be accomplished for the patient in the uh, uh, clinical research protocol, as well as what type of instrument and what type of debridement will uh, be accomplished. We will be also looking at the frequency and the timing, the number of debridements, when those debridements should be done. That will all be protocol driven. So as opposed to performing a clinical debridement in a wound healing uh, setting, when you decide what type of instrument is best and when the debridement should be accomplished, it's going to be a little different uh, in a clinical research protocol. And you'll be told, you need to be very uh, um, well advised to follow that very strictly. Violations of any part of the research protocol can be a problem for you as a principal investigator as well as for the research team. So follow the protocols that are outlined, follow procedures that are um, uh, outlined for you in the uh, research protocol. 